Hello everyone, this is uh, Eric from Etiquette and today I've got a special live stream that I'm going to do. Now usually I talk about education but today is Wednesday and I'm going to have a special live stream to South Africans who are coming to South Korea. So I'm just giving a couple of seconds for people to start joining um, and then uh, I'm going to start talking about the topic. So for my usual viewers, you can tune in on Sundays. Sundays, I've got my live stream at this time. Uh, so you can watch that. This is more for South Africans that are thinking about coming to South Korea and to teach here. Now, something, if, if you're new here, please put in your name, put in your question, say hi, and uh, I'll get started. So one year ago, I started YouTube and some of the first videos I made were videos that help South Africans uh, based on uh, Korean expressions that you can learn, survival Korean, um, some classroom Korean, Korean that you can use in the classroom. And now one year later, I'm doing another live stream asking questions to South Africans that are joining. Hello everyone. Um, if you're new, say hi, uh, put in your question. Uh, I'm going to start in a little bit. Um, for those of you who can't watch the live stream, this video will be put out and let me just check. Is the sound working okay? I've had some issues with sound in the past. So if you're new here, just say hi and uh, I can get started. Okay, so a little bit about me and I've been a teacher for 13 years. I taught in South Africa for for three years and then I came to Korea and I've been in Korea for 10 years. This is my 10th year in Korea. So I've got a little bit of experience um, and hopefully I can share some knowledge and some ideas with some South Africans that, that want to come to South Korea. You know, moving to a new country is something scary and we want to get as much information as possible. For myself too, you know, I wish there was someone that I could ask questions to that lived in Korea. Things that um, I was unsure of, of how to do it. Hi, Henny, coming to Korea. Nice. Have you been in Korea before? Um, or is this your first time? Yeah, um, so uh, you, you guys can ask me questions as we go along. And... Um, I'll also be answering some questions on Facebook and on WhatsApp in some of the groups. I ask them, what questions do you have? If you're coming to South Korea, uh, what are you nervous about? Hi, Shaina. I just saw you on WhatsApp. Coming 19th of February. Do you know where you're going? Do you know uh, which city you're going? And Henny, uh, what does that say? Um, no first time is that what you want to say yeah um i think i think it's it's daegu well i actually live in daegu and <laughs> henny you also came to daegu last year okay well i see everybody's in daegu well i'm not actually in daegu um my university where i teach is right outside of daegu like a 10 minute bus ride in so and um, it's a really nice city. It's great. There are lots of South Africans around here. Henny, if you're coming to Korea, do you know where you're going? Because I think I've got a lot of experience in Korea. But unfortunately, I don't have experience living in Seoul. I've only been in the south of the country. Oh, your good friend that you visited. I've only lived in the south of the country called Gyeongsang, uh, Gyeongsang Namdo and Busan. So um, most of my experience that I'll share with you today is all about that. The coronavirus, oh man, don't, don't worry about it. There, there's been more viruses. I mean, it's just because it's in the news. Usually when you, if, if you come to Korea, there, there's been numerous outbreaks and talks about it. But, you know, no, you shouldn't be worried about it at all. The thing is, you know, Korea is such a weird place. Like if... In the news, they would talk about the Korean War, and then when you talk to Koreans about it, they really don't care. It doesn't affect your life at all. 
And this virus, I mean, it's just because it's in the news. It's one person out of millions. Oh, well, thanks for watching, uh, Henny. Uh, yeah. Uh, I try and put out live streams. I think I'm getting better at it, hopefully. But um, yeah, I think, uh, I think it'll help. Yeah, Carl, I think it's overblown. Carl is uh, one of my colleagues here at Daegu. And I think it's just in the news right now. Okay, so um, everyone, if you've got any questions, just put it in the comments. And right now, I'm going to start answering these questions that I got on Facebook. The first one, maybe, Carl, you can help me with. Um, so, and Andre Hose gave so many good questions. Um, he gave uh, about eight questions about coming to Korea. And one of the first ones he asked was, why should you choose South Korea over China? And I've done some research, and actually Kyle has lived in China and in South Korea. Uh, well, he's in South Korea now, obviously. And maybe, Kyle, if, if you've got some, something you want to say about it, I'll just say what I've been looking on, uh, uh, what I've been researching. Uh, Shahina, how cold will it be? If you're coming in February, it's going to be quite cold. Um, you don't have to buy a new jacket. I think it will start getting warm towards the end of February. But bring a warm jacket, bring some, some sweaters and things. It's going to be cold for another month. And then at the end of March, it will start heating up and you can just go out with a light jacket. So definitely bring something warm. It is still winter, but I can see the sun rising and it's starting to get warmer. So if you're coming in mid-Feb, bring something warm. It's going to be cool for another month. Um, okay, now, why should you choose South Korea over China? Now, let's look at the pros and the cons. The thing is... Okay, so um, first things first, uh, South Korea is more advanced. Uh, most of the cities, you know, the transportation's great, you've got internet everywhere, and it's very safe. Um, and the, the, with China, it's a, it's a bit more rural, it's larger, there are more jobs. Um, I think the cost of living China is cheaper, whereas Korea is more expensive, and also... Um, one of the bad things, one of the cons is that Korea, the, the living wages have been the same. Hey, Andre, I'm just answering your question about uh, South Korea and China. The wages for teachers in South Korea has been stagnant for the past 10, 15 years. Where, and also the population is declining, so um, jobs are, it's getting more competitive for jobs. Whereas in China, you know, they, there's a more, uh, there's a larger demand for English. So um, some, I've read somewhere that some of the wages are increasing and it's also cheaper to live. Now, why do people choose South Korea if China looks like it's on the rise and, you know, it's, it's, um, it's better for your pocket if you live there? It's because South Korea is a great place to start. If you're, if you're traveling for the first time and you want to live in a country that's easy, South Korea is the place. You get everything you need. You've got your internet. It's safe. It's, it's easy to move around. Um, but you are, your wallet will be affected. Whereas where you go to China, it will be more difficult. There are um, stricter government, stricter regulations, and also the, the great a Chinese wall when it comes to the internet, you know, you're going to need a VPN to do anything there. Okay, so that's my reasons for China um, uh, versus South Korea. South Korea is a great place to come for the first time, but if you want to expand, go to China. Now, the next question is actually by Abis Temba, Tembe, sorry, and she asked me, Eric, is it possible for a family to come to South Korea? Because Unfortunately, this is one of the things we've got in South Africa where many families want to um, immigrate. They want to go to a country where they can have a job and they can raise their family in, in, a, in a safe environment. So many families, uh, I, I know a few families that have come to South Korea. Now, is it possible for you to bring your family? And she said, can I bring my husband and two kids? Now, this is what I talked about before is that wages aren't as high as they should be. Um, I think it's still possible for uh, a, when a single person comes to Korea with your salary, you'll be able to save some money. But if you bring a husband that you have to take care of 
and kids. You have, there are so many extra costs. Um, for example, but if both parents work, it's definitely doable. Now, I spoke to some other people. If you have kids in Korea, how do you take care of them? It's possible to send them to private kindergartens. Um, uh, Urinichi is what they call it. So, children's house. But you have to send them to a private one because the government does subsidize some of it, but you'll have to pay extra. The first time arriving in Korea, was it easy to make friends, adjust to people and the work culture? Um, yeah, uh, th this, is, this is where Facebook is your friend. There are groups for everything. Now, originally when I came to South Korea, I worked at a hug one. And most of the friends that you make will be people that are connected with the work. Otherwise, if you've got hobbies or interests, maybe you can join some groups and meet people there. The, the strange thing is, um, I usually tend to be on my own anyway. I'm quite solitary. And if you're okay with that, then you'll be fine in Korea. But you will, especially if you live in some rural areas, you will be kind of lonely during the week. If you live in Seoul and you've got an active social life, get those people involved, do things. Because if, if you move abroad, it's, it's going to be lonely. Okay, so Hangul, uh, not finding it easy, even though everybody, is it super useful being able to speak? Now, this is actually my next question, and this is also a great question from uh, Andre. He says, learning Korean. Pronounce Gyeongbuk and Jeonbuk. Okay, so Gyeongbuk and Jeonbuk. So Jeon is Jijie and Gyeong. Gyeong is Ge. Um, now, um, so first, learning Korean. Now, let me tell you a secret. Oh, well, it's not a secret, but let me tell you something. My parents lived in Korea for three years. And I tried to get them to learn Hangul or to learn some basic Korean, some survival Korean. And they said no. And for three years, without any Hangul, without being able to read Korean, without able to speak Korean, anything beyond uh, they were able to live in Korea and survive. So if you come to Korea, you can learn basic survival Korean. You can learn Hangul. Hangul, it will take a Let's say it doesn't take a day, it takes a week. Just learn the characters, write them out. If you learn basic survival Korean, which 90% of foreigners that come here do, and you learn how to read Hangul, you will have a good life and you won't have to worry about anything. Now, actually, um, my very first video that I did on this channel is called Survival Korean. And it's my first video that I made for South Africans to help you with some survival Korean, all the Korean you need if you want to live in Korea. And I even added another video for uh, classroom Korean, Korean that you can use in your classroom if you get stuck. Okay, so guys, yeah, um, if you come to Korea, learn Hangul, just practice, you know, and learn survival Korean. And then um, only if you're really interested in it, could you continue studying Korean, but it's not really necessary beyond that. Most foreigners initially start studying and then they just leave it. Okay, now let's see. Um, any regrets or success you have experienced in Hagwon versus Epic? Okay, now if you're in a Hagwon, you basically work for a business. They will give you, usually they give you a place to stay and there are other foreigners working there. Um, so you've, you feel like you're part of a community. Whereas if you're working for Epic, um, they can, they can give you an apartment or you can just get your own apartment and they pay you. Um, and then you're usually the only foreigner at the school, so you feel kind of isolated. I started with a hug one, but it was really tough. The work hours were long and, you know, you've got to work very hard. You know, you've got to learn their systems and, you know, you think you're a teacher, and you want to be strict, but actually the fact is that it's a business and the, the customer comes first. You have to, you know, create a fun time for those kids. You have to make it enjoyable for them. Um, and whereas where you're with the school, you know, it's just education. You're still going to want to make it fun for the kids, obviously, but it, that's not the sole purpose. Okay, um, now, 
Um, why do I regret doing Hog One? Because I started doing Hog One, but if I did, if, if you do four years of uh, public school and you get your master's degree, then you're eligible to go to university. And a university job in Korea is probably the best job you can get besides international working at an international school. It's so good. Um, you know, whatever they say, I'm not going to go into details why it's so good, but just trust me. So if I started, a, if, if I could do everything over, if I could redo everything, I would come to Korea, immediately go for public school because that is experience that's going to count towards your resume. Whereas Hagwon is just like, oh yeah, you've got a Hagwon experience. Um, so I would come to Korea, do my four years, get my master's and move to university. I, I, I definitely recommend that if I could do it over again. Um, okay, now let's go to another one. Um, this is a question that Tandoe to um, Msani asked me. She said, um, Eric, what are some good agencies you can go through? Now, you can use an agency to try and get into public school, or you can go onto websites like Dave's ESL or on Facebook to find jobs and just do it yourself. But some uh, recruiting agencies that um, I've seen that were very good is uh, I came with Korean Horizons, and that's also in the Busan area. Golden Key, I've heard great things about, Corvia, and then there are a bunch more. Uh, but I would say if you want to get into uh, public school, go through these agencies, they can help you. But if you're desperate to get to Korea or you want a certain place or certain, um, uh, you know, a certain place to work at, if you want to bring family, I would actually go through um, and find a hog one on my own. And this, I want to add to this. Guys, if you have questions, please put them in the, put them in the chat. Uh, great point, Eric. If your university job, China and Hagwon in Korea. Yeah, definitely. A will being able to speak Korean work to your advantage when applying? It won't hurt. It, it will definitely help you. If, if you could, if you can use basic Korean. I remember when I went for my university interview, um, my boss asked me and said, okay, can you speak Korean? And then I replied in Korean. Yes, I can speak some Korean. And uh, I think she was impressed by that because uh, obviously I got the job. Okay. Uh, if you have a personal recommendation for a good job, that's game changing. If you don't have a personal recommendation. Yeah, um, that's so true. So if you're looking for a hug one, um, what we would do is go online and ask for recommendations, ask people to tell you. Um, will this be added to my other videos? Yes, I'll put it, but I'll put it in the link with uh, South Korea, not with my educational videos. Thank you, Andre. Um, now, uh, yeah, definitely you can watch it later. I know uh, I kind of ramble on. Okay, um, now I want to tell you something very interesting. Um, somebody actually asked me about savings. Somebody asked me about savings. And I think this is a really good point because why do we come to, why do we go to another country to, to, um, work because maybe we want to save some money to take back home no we don't we're just not doing it for the love and the experience that's extra but we want to save some money so what do most foreigners do when you come to south korea there are actually lots of ways to save money what most foreigners do is they they get a bank account and they also get a bank account through keb um is it keb keb yeah with keb hana yeah, it's the KB Hana is the best bank for expats because you get this account called the Easy One account, where when you put money inside it, it automatically transfers it to your bank in South Africa or if you're in America, in America. So um, that's the best one to use. That's what most foreigners do because in South Korea, I've been looking around at different banks, but the the uh, if you save money, the rates are so low, maybe one point eight. 2%, maybe 2.5 if you're lucky. So the uh, the rates are very low. But um, for someone like myself who has lived here for a couple of years, I do it a little bit differently. Let me tell you what I do. So when you get a house in Korea, you have to give a down payment and the more money you give, the less rent you can pay. <clears throat> 
So if I save, let's say I save 10 million won and I give that uh, and I add it to the, you know, um, uh, if I add that, if I get an apartment and I add that 10 million won, I'm going to pay 100, maybe I think it's like 100,000 won less. That's the key money, right? So your key money, if you give more key money, your rent will be lower. So imagine that, that's almost 10% that you're saving. So if you give 10 million won, and then through the course of the year, uh, and you're going to pay uh, 100,000 won uh, every month, that's almost, you know, that's 10% you're basically saving. Okay, that's a great tip. So Carl just said, cost of living is low in China. So if your only aim is to save money, maybe China would be better for that. So um, saving money. So what I do is, if I know I'm going to stay in Korea for a while, I'd rather save my money and use it for the key money, for the deposit. Because then you're basically going to save that money that you give to them. You're basically going to save 10% on the rent you're going to pay. You're going to pay 10% lower rate for that. So you're actually saving more money. And if you can save up to 50 to 80 million won, you can actually get Jonse. What is Jonse? Jonse is you give that whole amount to them and you live rent free. Usually, uh, a school would give you a place to live or they give you the option of getting rent. The rent is usually 400,000 won. So if you got your own place to stay, you would take that extra money. And that is way more than you would get if you try to save it in South Africa. Um, yeah, so that's just my two cents on it. Also, if you come to Korea, get a credit card because you get so many discounts if you get a credit card. Go to KB HANA, ask them for a credit card. In most cases, they'll give it to you. And you use that credit card for everything. If you do use public transportation, if you buy stuff, 10% off, 10% off, 10% off. And that all adds up. At the end of the year, actually, I just did my taxes yesterday. Um, you just go onto the website. How much key money must you pay to qualify for free rent? Uh, it depends. Um, I just had a friend who said they paid uh, 40 million. Um, but in most cases, for a small place, it would, depending where you are, but I would say uh, maybe 50 to 80 million for like a one for one or two bedroom, right? So if you can save that much, imagine all that rent that you're, you're basically putting in your pocket, which is better than saving your money. So that's what I'm moving towards. Um, so get a banking card, use that for everything. Now, I just did my taxes yesterday. And basically what they do is they calculate how much money you've spent using your card. But they only use 20, you can only use 25% of your annual salary. So if you use your card all the time, switch to your debit card and use that after you've used the 25%. Uh, card from Cacao Bank is the best. Mm, yeah, I haven't used the Cacao Bank, but yeah, I, I saw that it's, it's getting really popular. I've got Cacao Pay that I use sometimes. So I've linked my credit card to um, my Cacao Cacao is like WhatsApp, and I've linked that to my cacao, and then I buy everything. Uh, would you recommend uh, exchanging? Yeah, so um, definitely exchange to dollars in South Africa. The RAND, they're not going to take it here. So exchange to dollars, and then come here, and then exchange it. Or if it's possible, you can get, if it's possible to get Korean one in South Africa, try that. But otherwise, just get dollars. I've heard of so many people that come with rands and then it's useless. So um, maybe don't do that. Just bring dollars or if it's possible, exchange to Korean one. Um, bonuses. But it's easier to find a place on your own for the first time. See, that is kind of difficult. If you're here for the, f will our debit cards work in South Korea? I'm not sure. I, I don't think so. Um, uh, okay, okay. So easier to get a place on your own. Yeah, that's difficult. So the first year, if you're here the first year, maybe just go with the apartment they give. Maybe later, a couple of months later, if you if you really don't like your apartment, you can tell your boss, listen, we need to change this, but it's usually in the contract. So um, I would say maybe the second year, if you're staying here the first year, just 
write it out and then the second year you can change. Also very important, there are point cards for everything. If you go and shop at a place and you like the shop, ask them what point card do I need. There's a bakery called Paris Baguette. You get a point card for that 10% off. Now imagine if you go to a place regularly, 10% of that, it adds up quickly. Same with Lotte Mart and all the other big marts. You get point cards for that. Just use it. If you get your phone contract, so when you come to Korea the first time, uh, it will take you a month or so. What did Kyle say? How long does it take Kyle to get? ARC takes a few weeks. Okay. So your ARC is basically your identity card that you get once you, you're registered in Korea. Um, and then after that, you can get your bank and you can get your phone. Now, here's something a lot of South Africans don't know. That with if, if you get your phone contract, they also give you extras for that. If you get the right credit card from a bank, you pay less on your cell phone bill. For example, I used to have a KB card and then um, I learned that if I get a different card for my phone, I could get almost 30%, I think it's 25% off my, um, my phone bill. Also, um, they give you free tickets to go to the movie. They give you free st Starbucks. One of the other cards I had, my credit card from KEB, gave me 50% off Starbucks. Imagine that. Going to a Starbucks, usually it costs $5 and you pay $2.50. Two right? $2.50. So, think about these things. These are things that most foreigners just, they don't think about, they don't ask. Find a Korean friend that's really good, usually one of the younger ones. Say, listen, I want to take you out for coffee. Can you just organize some of the things for me you know it'll make your life so much easier and you'll save a lot more money okay now um studying in korea i heard someone ask about studying in korea yes it's possible there's a a couple of my friends are studying in korea right now uh, there are bursaries they are kind of difficult to get but if you go onto google and you search study in korea there's a website for it uh, you will have to study korean most foreign foreign students do I just met a couple now that are doing their, their graduates and uh, their masters and their, their doctors. They have to study some Korean and then they can get in. Uh, to, 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 to move to Korea and then look for a job. Yes, you can do that. With your phone from SA and put a SIM card or do you... No, I think you can, um, unless it's blocked. I, I think it's possible to bring your phone and then change. Um, I would do that. I mean, uh, I would bring my phone unless it's blocked and then see if you can get a SIM card. I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on this. Okay, let's see. Some more questions. Uh, let me go through. Debit cards. Okay, now uh, back to some of the questions. Uh, okay, here are the two ones that are going to be difficult to talk about. Christianity and religion. Uh, this one's fun. I love this one. So, a lot of people talk about how in Korea there are many, you, you know, there are lots of, uh, there are many churches everywhere. There are crosses. So, at night, you'll see the crosses lit up and there are many churches. And there are also many cults in Korea. Uh, if you walk down the street, you'll normally see some ladies in pairs trying to talk to people, trying to convert some people. And, yeah, that's just, I feel like the Korean mentality is just made for those group, type of group cults, right? Um, but they really don't bother you. They'll say, hey, excuse me, can I talk to you? And you're just like, no, I don't want to talk to you. Sometimes uh, it, they'll come to your house too. But, I mean, you've got different religions all over. Mostly it's Christianity. And then also, you know, um, we've got some um, Catholics too. How long did it take you to deal with culture shock? Um, yeah, no, uh, culture shock. It's, it's weird, right? It's actually, um, because I've been here, you know, I'm trying to remember how it was the first time I got to, yeah, it was new and it was strange. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it was really a different experience, but it's one that I really value because, you know, coming all the way from South Africa, many of us don't have that experience of being in a new culture. So yeah, come over, maybe it'll last, I would say, you know, you get used to things and if you have friends around you, it will take maybe a couple of months and then you get used to it and that's, then it's your life, 
you know. Um, I still learn new things every day, but um, yeah, you know, you kind of get used to it uh, after a couple of months, I feel. Yeah, d don't worry too much. Uh, just enjoy it, you know, go for the ride. Now, back to religions and stuff. So, you do get people coming to your house, and a lot of people warn, don't join the cults. Um, man, they let them do their thing, you know, as long as they don't hurt me, I don't care. Actually, I've got this this thing that I say that, um, you know, I just try and if, if somebody asks me to join a cult, I just say yes. And I join so many cults. So when they say, Eric, are you are you coming to the meeting tomorrow? And I'll be like, oh, no, my other cults, you know, we're going to sacrifice a goat or something. Sorry, I can't. And then they just kick me out of the cult anyway. You know? So yeah, don't worry about it. Um, if you are religious and you want to join a church, they'll welcome you with uh, open arms. Um, I've recently been to a church and, um, you know, it was so nice connecting with people. So really try that. You know, if you are a church goer, you'll find enough churches here and uh, many foreign churches too. Um, now, um, this is a bit difficult. Mental illness, depression. Uh, these days, you know, uh, people are struggling with some issues and they think, you know, if you come to Korea, uh, can you get a job? Should you tell your employer that you've got a, a mental illness? No, don't. Keep it secret. Uh, Koreans feel that, you know, that's something personal. It's not something you want to share and they feel that it's something that's different. And in Korea, you want to fit in. Uh, also, I mean, if, if they have kids that they want to send to a teacher, they want to send their kids to a happy teacher that's friendly, that teaches them. Not to say people with a mental illness can't do that. But in Korea, they even though they've got clinics and they've got a... They don't have many therapists and uh, many clinics, but they do exist. Um, I would say if you have a mental problem or you take some medication for it, if it's under control and, you know, nobody needs to know, don't tell them uh, because it will just be seen as a negative and they might choose another candidate. Um, what I would say is find a therapist online to talk to, um, talk to your physician, your doctor. And uh, yeah, when you're going to an interview, better to keep it secret. Okay, let's see. Any other questions, guys? Um, yeah, I feel... Catholic, yeah. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I like going to the church. Oh, yeah. So if you want to bring your kids, I've had parents, single parents coming over and they want to bring their kids. Um, normally, foreigners have to pay more and don't even think about sending your kids to an English um, kindergarten. That's insanely expensive. It's only for businessmen, uh, people that make a lot of money. So, but you want to send them to Korean places. And some of the parents are really happy that their kids are learning Korean and uh, spending time with other kids. Because um, one of my friends actually told me that, you know, when someone comes to the house, their daughter's like five years old and she speaks better Korean than them. So sometimes she has to translate it to the, to the dad and the mom. So that's a nice story. Yeah, uh, kids... They're very adaptable, but it will be difficult, you know, run, uh, taking care of your kids and working at the same time. Especially most academies, uh, most hug ones, you work from three to nine. Tips for first month in Korea. Um, yeah, make, uh, th this is a great question. Wow. Uh, yeah, make friends because the, uh, as soon as you get off, you know, you, you want to explore things and the quicker way to, to explore things is to make friends. So find some people in your neighborhood. If it's with your hug one, make friends and go out and let them take you to some of the good places in your neighborhood. Make a list of the foods you want to eat. You know, um, maybe some people will take Okay, so here's, uh, okay, I'll answer that one now. Um, but your first month, just explore, you know, find out where your place is and go and see as much in your town and in your vicinity as possible. Make friends, let them show you because, you know, if you have to learn everything on your own, it'll take so much time. So be social, make friends, and they'll show you around. Uh, easiest lesson to prepare for, demo lesson, uh, anything fun, I'm sure... Uh, there's a great site called Mike's Home ESL that will give you some some uh, warm-up activities which are good. Um, yeah, just something easy and fun. Don't overthink it. Take a simple topic. Uh, get the students talking. And I think I did. 
I actually, I did a quick, I, I actually did an interview, an online interview where I did an online lesson. So check that out. Um, maybe that will give you an idea. I actually talked about it. How much money should you bring for your first month? Now, this is a little bit difficult because I remember your first month, sometimes they don't pay you your first month. You actually have to wait two months. And uh, I didn't bring enough. I brought a couple of hundred thousand and I thought it would be fine. And I had to beg my dad for some extra money, which he sent to me. Uh, what I would say is, yeah, um, your first month, uh, you're not going to go out too much. You're not going to spend on anything. I would say bring a million for per month. So that's like 10,000 um, if it's possible. Uh, any streets, it's street marts. Uh, yeah, lots of street marts. How friendly are Koreans? Uh, okay, so Koreans tend to stay in groups. There's a reason for that. Um, they tend to stand in groups uh, to stay in groups because when they're in a group, uh, they they when you know someone, you have to form part of the hierarchy. If you're older the younger kids have to start listening to you. So how they solve it is they stay in their group and they don't, unless somebody introduces them or they're a friend from work, they generally don't open up to new people, right? Uh, street smarts, you need to know. Uh, no, just be friendly. Man, South African people are so friendly. Just be friendly. Learn onion or so and uh, some Korean words and you'll be fine, right? They want, once you open someone, once you start talking to someone, they'll be friendly and they'll be like, oh, this person is just trying to talk to me. So take it with a grain of salt. If you see someone on the street, they're going to be like, pa. But if you say, hi, you know, can I talk with you a little bit? Uh, maybe I'll open up. You know, you never know. So I wouldn't shoot down Koreans as being, you know, uh, strict like that. I would say, talk to them and they'll open up. And because you're a foreigner, you don't need to form, you, need, you don't need to abide by the rules, right? That's what's great. So instead of, inst you're just going to have to start street smarts that you need to know. Yeah, just learn some basic Korean. Uh, look at my uh, video I did on um, basic Korean, um, survival Korean. Just use that and use whatever Korean you have. Um, and then, you know, everything is pretty easy in Korea. You know, once you're here, it looks like it's brand new, but yeah, just find your shops, find the places to go out and do that. Second lesson. Ah, good good call, Kyle. So when you do your lesson, if they ask you for a demo lesson, do something easy and fun. And then the second lesson depends on the school. Uh, good catch there, Kyle. Okay, uh, so if you're coming to Korea for the first time, bring about uh, 10,000 Rand per month. Um, I think that's a minimum. Uh, gifts for co-workers. Chocolate's fine. Um, yeah, I think chocolate's okay. You can bring maybe, uh, uh, you know, maybe something pretty from South Africa, like a postcard or something. But yeah, chocolate, go. everybody likes chocolate. You could bring, um, I guess, coffee. Bring some coffee is fine. Any type of coffee. Um, they love coffee here. Uh, China have tiers that limit where you work and stay. Same, same in South Africa. Uh, Kyle, could you answer that? China have tiers that limits where you work and stay. Same in Korea? No, but here's what happens. Uh, Andre, yeah, tea, rooibos, that's also fine. They start, you, you're starting to see it in more of the coffee shops, rooibos appearing, so that's a good idea. Um, here's what happens. They take um, Seoul and Busan, take the best candidates. So if you can get into Seoul and Busan, it is more expensive, but you'll find more foreigners there too. Um, and then, so, in South Korea, most South Africans, I feel, you know, perhaps we're here in Daegu or some of the smaller cities, but you do get a lot in Seoul and in Busan. But, yeah, I guess more people want to be either in, in the larger cities. So, yeah, no tiers. So, you can work anywhere where they actually take you. You know, it's all about um, if they want you there or not. Okay, um, is there anything else I wanted to talk about? So, uh, I talked about bringing a family. It is difficult, but if you're two people, you can do it and send your kids to a normal um, uh, kindergarten, and that should be about three to four hundred thousand one per month. Uh, good agencies, why Korea, uh, Korea over China, Christianity and religion, mental illness, 
Learning Korean, I've got videos on that and learn Hangul and you'll be fine. Uh, savings, I talked about banking. Studying in Korea, just Google it. It is possible, but it's kind of difficult to get a scholarship or something like that. Um, move to South Korea and then look for a job. Yes, this is possible. Um, it is scary though, because you're going to come over with your own money and um, you're going to come over with your own money and you have to find your own place. So that's a scary idea unless you know someone here. Andre, how long have I been here? I've been here for 10 years. I don't do my own um, the, the, the taxes easily set up. So for the first two years as South Africans, you don't need to do taxes. After that, you just register everything on the, the website. And then once a year, you just go and click some buttons and it shows it. I'm sure there are some, um, you know, on Google, you'll find some things about it. And then, yeah, we just go. I went to my university, just clicked a couple of buttons. And um, yeah, I'm making back some money. Not, not a lot, but a little bit. And then um, after that, yeah, you just take it in somewhere. It's not that difficult, actually. It's just if you know how to use your money. Visiting other countries. Ah, oh, that's a good question. Uh, how did you navigate visiting other countries on vacation? Um, actually, you know, I feel like I've traveled a little bit, but not as much as I should have. Now, if you go to other countries where you don't need a visa, you just go. You go, um, you know, Philippines, Hong Kong, uh, and now Russia too. You can go to Russia. But uh, some places like when I went to the Rugby World Cup, I um, I had to get a visa. I did a video that uh, of that getting my visa to go to Japan. It's basically you just get all your documents, go to the embassy, tell them, listen, I will go. Um, they give you a day, they stamp it, you pick it up, and then you travel to the country. Easy as that. Just remember, yeah, to take your alien card with you because coming back into Korea, you need your ID to show. Uh, medical aid, private or government, government. Um, yeah, if, if you're working with the Hagwon, um, yeah, you get 50% medical aid. Everybody has to get it. Some private schools give you private um, health care, but it's not necessary. Oh, guys, by the way, I want to tell you this. So I did my taxes yesterday. And here's the thing. South Africans don't get pension. Everybody else gets pension, gets, uh, you know, government pension. So if, like, I worked at a Hagwon, and I worked public school, and I worked after school, for seven years, I worked all that time, and my pension just went back to the government. South Africans don't get our pension back, unless you are on a private pension. So when you move to, I say so too much, when you move to a university, you get private pension. So for the first time, so I've been working at the university for three years now. Now I'm on private pension. And for yesterday, for the first time, I looked at my pension and I'm like, well, finally. So for seven years that I worked here, I basically lost out almost 20 million won. 20 million won not getting it. And now with my pension now, I think after three years, I'm on 10 million won, which isn't bad, you know. Um, I get to retire in 2050 if I continue teaching at, uh, if I continue teaching here. But I mean, that's my money. It's uh, money that I get and you can actually feel it's growing and, you know, it's not being wasted or given back. So, sorry, that's one thing that sucks about being a South African. Americans, Canadians, they, they're all making a lot of money. I think they do. Uh, I think you have to ask them not to if it's possible, but I think some of it goes for it. Yeah, I think you have to ask them not to uh, deduct it, but obviously at the university they deduct it. Um, I've heard some people, you know, you have to make sure when you go to your academy that they don't because some people, you know, they end up paying it and then they, you know, it's just gone. I don't think that happened to me, but yeah, just make sure that uh, you pay your taxes because another friend of mine, um, he just found out that, uh, so you can pay taxes every month of, of your income. And then at the end of the year, they don't, you know, they don't take that off, you know, but what happened to him was they never paid that. So now suddenly he had to pay a, almost a 1.5 million, just like that. So that's, that's something you want to be careful of. Make sure that your money is taken care of.
Okay, uh, everyone, uh, do you have any other questions? Um, yeah, uh, I started this channel just to, uh, I shared some, some videos to help South Africans that are coming here. Now you get a third pension in cash, the rest need to be. Uh, Korean pension, I think you just, you can only get a third pension in cash. Um, I don't know about that. All I know is that, you know, it keeps on adding up unless you, you can take some of it early, you know, some of it you can, you can borrow, you can lend against that amount or you can use some of it. So, um, yeah, no, I'm not sure about South Africa. I've, I've been out of South Africa for a long time. Ah, okay. Here we go. The dating scene. Actually, I should do a whole video on that. Um, well, uh, I've dated Koreans, I've dated foreigners, and um, obviously there are more Koreans here, um, and a lot of Koreans prefer dating foreigners for some reason. Um, maybe it's less stressful because we don't have family, it's less stressful and it's, it's easier. But uh, there's a healthy foreign crowd too, so um, whatever you're interested in. Um, I mean, the best way is just to go out, make friends, and then socialize and meet people that way uh in general it's people are the same everywhere you know um if you date a foreigner or korean um you're going to have some interesting things that you can learn about them and uh, they'll have some things that they can uh, learn from you and it's uh it's just dating is dating you know so um yeah it's it's something exciting whatever you whatever rocks your boat as a suffer with people there um as a South African, yeah, it was fine. You know, um, uh, I dated a few girls that are from other countries in South Africa. What jobs are there besides teaching English? Man, Andre, you ask the best questions. Okay, for teachers, uh, mostly teachers. Um, the only other um, foreigners that you meet here are students and uh, military, uh, uh, US military, and then engineers that come from companies. Um, other jobs that you can do, there are, like, if you want another job, your Korean's going to have to be super good. Uh, yeah, if you want to work for a company or do modeling or do anything, basically anything, you want to have great Korean. And the only way to get your Korean good like that is, uh, is to perhaps be a student. So I think that's the easiest way because, um, I would say 95% of people that come to Korea and they're like, Oh, I want to study Korean on their own and they just start, they're never going to get to that expert level. The only the the only ones that really do are the students that come here and they sit in class and they study and they're dedicated. So yeah, um if you do want to get another job, um you're going to have to have really good connections or your Korean's going to have to be good. Yeah, that's um me myself one of the things I always told myself is I want to get better at Korean uh, because once you read that, reach that survival Korean, it's not necessary anymore. It's super easy. Uh, you can just live your life and you can have small conversations and stuff. But I feel like I should be studying more, maybe a little bit later. Uh, owning property, it is possible. Uh, I've, it is a bit expensive. Uh, I heard there is one bank that gives mortgages to foreigners. Uh, the system is a little bit different where, um, yeah, uh, you know, you also pay some money and then you get your mortgage and you pay it back. But I think it works a little bit differently. I've got some friends who got, who, um, got property, but it is uh, an expensive thing and they don't normally give it to foreigners, but there is a, a bank that I heard that gives mortgages now. So it is possible. It's something I'm looking at. They're actually building some some new buildings here that which i'm looking at and it might be interesting to own but then again i like being free getting citizenship no um that's super hard like you get foreigners that marry and you know they get f visas which is like your permanent residency and then you know you can get upgraded and get like an f6 or something but you're never ever really going to be a citizen um, I feel like you'll you'll mostly call it permanent residency. Uh, how do you get it? Just in case, married, and then also 
there is a way via points. So if you learn, if you study Korean and you've got a certain amount of points for doing things in the country, then you can do it. Rugby, there are a lot of teams, lots of South Africans and Kiwis here. In the major cities, you'll find them. Busan, Daegu, Seoul. A bunch of my friends played. I played a little bit, but um, yeah, I, I didn't continue with it. I'm getting a bit old. Um, but yeah, a bunch of guys that play. It's really fun. Um, I think I'd, I'd like to play some touch again, but yeah, you'll find uh, that's also a great way to meet other blokes because you'll meet a bunch of guys. They're really into it. That's a great way, way to meet people. So make sure you're in one of the largest cities or you're okay with traveling. Okay, uh, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much for joining this live stream. You know, I've always just wanted to help um, and uh, can you buy? Yeah, if, if you've got a roof and you're if it's possible, I'm um, actually I've got a I've got a friend living here in Daegu, and we're going to barbecue. We're going to dry on uh, on Friday. It should be good to get travel insurance that will cover you for 24 hours. Yeah, I guess if you want to, but for 24 hours, well, I think South Korea is super safe. You know, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about getting traveling insurance for 24 for 48 hours in Korea. Maybe if I stayed a couple of weeks. Um, pollution levels. Kershey, yeah, it's bad, uh, especially if you're in Seoul, uh, it, there's a lot of smog certain days, uh, you'll want to get one of those masks, and at home you want to get a humidifier, uh, up in Seoul it can get really bad, but down here in the south it's a little bit better, here in Daegu sometimes you have smoggy days too, but yeah, in Seoul uh, you'll want to get a, you're not, if, it's way different from South Africa. No, uh, when I went to South Africa on on a trip, I'm like, wow, the sky's so clear, it's amazing. So yeah, it's not China. I think China is even worse. And then in Korea, up north, close to Seoul, pollution quite bad too. Um, some days it's clearer, some days it's worse. But in general, you'll want to get um, uh, it's it's not great. Yeah, no, to be honest, like I don't live in Seoul. I live down here. So, but still, some days I, I see you know the sky looks kind of gray, and I think. Well, it's a little bit of pollution, but if you move down south, it's or to the to the east, I think it's a little bit better. Yeah, guys, any more questions? Uh, Chinese? Ah, oh, really? Yeah. So Carl even says, you know, if you're going to China, it's going to get so bad. Um, I, I saw some videos on it. What do they call it? Epic Blue, where um, some days. Oh, so there was a what is it? Epic. Where they, where they shut down everything for a day and people said, oh, you can finally see the blue sky um, because some politicians were in town. Yeah, uh, anyone? In, uh, thanks for staying with me all the time. Carl, thanks for staying and answering some questions too. Um, everyone, I might do some more in the future if you have any questions. Um, just leave it uh, on my site somewhere. Uh, yeah, Shaina, if, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I know when I came the first time, I wish I could talk to someone. Uh, yeah, Carl, thanks a bunch. Guys, uh, have a fantastic day. Let me know when you're coming to Korea, uh, if you have any issues, and uh, I'll try and do it. Scams? What kind of scams? Yes. Uh, on fa You'll find mostly Facebook scams. Uh, those are dangerous. You'll find uh, guys trying to sell things online, so make sure that it's safe first. Uh, other types of scams? Maybe, but it's not going to affect your life as a teacher here. You know, if it's a, if it's really like most of it is aimed at Koreans, so they're not going to aim it at foreigners living here. Um, but uh, except for on Facebook, so yeah, don't worry too much about that, Kershi. Okay, yeah, guys, uh, this is my channel. Every every Sunday, I'll have a live stream. It's focused on education. But if you want to pop in and ask a question, go for it. Driver's license. Andre, why do you have all these good questions? I'm not getting to say goodbye. Driver's license, uh, you can bring your South African one and you can ex uh, and get an international one. You can exchange it and get a Korean one. What I did was I came to Korea, my driver's license expired, and I just said, I'm just going to do the Korean license. And I did the Korean test. It was, it was easy, it was simple, very easy. You just go and you write it in English. You do the driving test and then you get your license and I'm driving a car. And listen, don't don't listen to other people that try and scare you and say, oh, it's so weird driving. It's scary. People are crazy. 
yeah, there are guys on motorcycles, scooters driving around delivering food. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. But driving around, once you get a car and you live in a rural area, super easy. Your life, your life is different. You, it's so easy. Secondhand cars are super cheap. I paid 27,000 grand for my secondhand car and it drives beautifully um, and I don't have an issue at all. So don't listen to other people saying, trying to scare you because they don't know better. Um, if you live in a rural area, get yourself a bike, get yourself a car, enjoy. If you're living in Seoul or Busan, you don't really need to. Exactly. You can survive anything. Yeah, um, guys, thanks a bunch. Um, have a good day. And if you have any more questions, just pop it in the comments somewhere. Okay, everyone. Um, I'm Eric. Uh, they've, electric's getting bigger now. Elect there are more places to do electric, but mostly you'll get fossil fuel. Now I'm going to say goodbye. Okay, everyone. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Peace.